you provide the intelligence, our politicians, I've continued to tell people, thanks for that number, you cannot discuss security without politics. The necessary intelligence might be provided, but the implementers, the political players, would downplay it and play politics with it. Well, well, just you referred to the budget coming late. We recall that most of uh, a lot of the rationale behind why that took so long was this issue of whether or not the principal offices of the National Assembly would be removed, if you recall. Uh, how much of, uh, you know, you've referred to the role of politics in all of this. How does that ultimately get curtailed, though? Because ultimately each side has their own political interests that they're trying to project and uh, sustain. The best way to handle is let us look at our national interest not self and personal interest. Because you might, there are issues of uh, security uh, or intelligence uh, driven operations. And you give intelligence. I've had personal experience while in service. You give intelligence to the drivers. Because they are affected, they ignore it. I'm not saying whether that is the situation, but let it be on record that you have done your bit and let the politician, but at the end of the day, it will backfire and boomerang on all of us. And uh, that is why at times, when you see commission of inquiry being set up, the state security will come out to tell you, well, we provided the intelligence or we did not, mm. or we failed to do that, or, you know, you understand. Uh, Mr. Alobi, we heard yesterday uh, from uh, President Buhari in, uh, when he visited Kaduna, uh, a, a kind of a town hall setting concerning the clashes that have taken place there, some of the killings. And he singled out the Nigeria police as being found wanting in terms of the inability to secure that particular environment. He warned them yesterday that he will be watching them closely from here on out. In your view, is, does that tell the story or is there more to it? Do you believe that Nigeria police should squarely receive the blame for what's happening in places like Kaduna? The Nigerian police force will, 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 will be operationally effective if they are empowered. If they are empowered, because the police also have their own intelligence unit, guarding intelligence, they don't, because they don't have to rely on the, the state security or military intelligence. They need to also cultivate their own intelligence. But this intelligence requires, information guarding requires money, funding. Even operational effectiveness requires training and capacity building. You don't give, don't ask somebody to go to, to do these things. And again, the police too have not been given that enablement, the empowerment, to be able to perform their statutory function. So I think they will rise to the occasion, but they need to be empowered to carry out that function. But when we talk to you know, police authorities, publicly and privately, they'll tell you that, look, yes, we have our challenges, but we're up to the task. Uh, there seems to be this, this kind of institutional pride that, look, we're, we're up to it. You don't really hear much about this is where we're falling short, this is what we need, etc. You is, only hear that is. from third parties. No, they say, it is, the police, while you are in service, they want to protect their jobs and their ranks. They will not want to come and say, oh, but the government, the, gov the government may feel that, oh, why are, you, why are you trying to run down the government? Why are you trying to criticize the government? But I think, I think, the, 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 the way we, we, I can say that because I'm no, I'm no more in service. I'm, I, I'm, I, at least I need to tell, that we, need, we don't have to play to the gallery mm -hmm. or pretend, mm -hmm. pretend when, that all is well, it's not well. And the government should have a listening ear. The government said, this, that, you, you know why God made it, the way God made it that you can close your eyes with your eyes, close your mouth with your mouth. You cannot close your ear with your ears that you must have a listening ear all the time. The government should have a listening ear and listen to the needs, the needs of the police. And the government should also have a listening ear to the citizens' needs mm. in terms of the, the, what, the, what they are right. The government also should carry out, any national orientation should carry out a an, an, an kind of aggressive, robust public elected on the role of the citizens in, prom in promoting peace and security. Because the citizens don't even know their obligations, obligations in line with section 24 of the constitution. So this, this is lacking. Because here in Nigeria, we emphasize on our rights, our rights, our rights. We forgot our, our obligations. And even our NGOs emphasize on the rights of the citizens. They don't talk about the obligations of the citizens. So I think we try to educate our citizens of the obligations, obligations to our citizens of this country, in terms of law and order, promoting peace, even in, law, in being law abiding. These are all things they need to educate the public. Mm. And the media has a role to, to play in that uh, aspect. Mr. Geofo, one of the uh, issues that uh, kind of come up when you look at what's going on right now uh, concerning the Islamic movement of Nigeria, IMN, is uh, people have tended to uh, specify the IMN as kind of the, 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 sh the face of, uh, of Nigerian Shia. And 
we understand that even under the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan, you had uh, representatives, or let me say agents rather, because they were all discreet, agents of the Shia, the Shia uh, you know, armed movement Hezbollah in Lebanon, having armories in places like Kano, in places like uh, in the Northeast. That all came out then, and they were arrested by the DSS. Now we're hearing about the IMN. And I want to ask you, if we know that Iran is sponsoring these kinds of armed groups to advance a Shia agenda in various countries where they feel they want to. At what point should it become a collective effort, not just against the IMN, but against foreign intervention, particularly Iranian influence in sponsoring armed movements in countries where they ordinarily should not have influence? Well, in the other areas, I can't see for Nigeria whether they're, they're sponsoring armed groups, whether these people are armed, because I am yet to establish in the public space that they are armed. No, I'm not referring to no, IMN no, no. now. I'm referring yeah. to the ones that we know were armed, that were caught with armories, that exactly. were taken to court. Yes. You see, that is the issue of uh, you know, our judicial system and politics. How did that case end? The State Security Service has, on several occasions, intercepted cashier of arms being imported to Nigeria. The customs are doing that. And we still have influx of arms. And it is very, very dangerous for us as we step into 2019. So we come to your question. If um, we need the, the, the NIA, the SSS, to collaborate more in terms of exchange of intelligence to get these people identified, know their leadership, their aims and objectives, their sources of funding, and those. these are areas. Once these are established, I think our problems will be half solved. For now, I still suggest that the leadership of the various security agencies come and see that and together and see how this issue of the Islamic movement will be resolved. Because if you push them underground, like I earlier pointed, they will, they will now start they start guerrilla warfare properly being armed now. And that would not, not be nice for us. At this juncture, we're going to throw it over to our Lego studio where Neota is standing by. Neota?